What's really remarkable about these little hummingbirds is the amount of effort that males put into their displays. So we found that they are on their display territories for up to eight months of the year. A single male will come back to the same territory hour after hour for up to six to eight hours a day, every day for those eight months. We call this float display, where the male floats back and forth hovering in front of another bird. And now they're copulating. So the male has actually gone back. He's resting a foot on her, but also supporting his weight. And that's all the contact the male will have with that female. And the female will now move off and raise the young herself. So this male is singing at a rate of about two songs per second, one song every half second. And you can see that they'll sit here and do this same song over, over, and over again. It has some visual components to it as well. They're opening up their beak and you can see their pink gape and they'll also be flicking their white tail. And it seems to be an alerting both that the, to other males that this male is here on his territory so don't mess with him and don't come into the territory unless you want to pick a fight or to females that this male is present. Hummingbirds are of interest to us because they're one of three groups which are known to learn their vocalizations. So we humans take learning for granted because we use it all the time when learning speech as youngsters and learning new slang as adults. In among birds though and, and among animals in general it's a relatively rare phenomenon. Parrots can do it, Songbirds can do it, and hummingbirds are the third group that can do it. Each male has a single song type, and it's not really a very complex song. We hear it almost as just a chirp. But there is some variation. Each male has a single song type, but that song type may be shared with some of their neighbors. And so we see song neighborhoods or little vocal dialects. Previously, people have thought those songs were learned because when you see that sort of variation at a very small scale it's suggestive not of genetic differences but that males are learning the song of neighbors when they settle onto a territory. But what we found recently is that these males will also occasionally change from one song to another and so they're capable of learning as adults which was something that hadn't been demonstrated in hummingbirds before. <laughs>